Welcome to the 8th player construction showcase, my fellow gamers and going medieval fans. In this one, I have for you another mind-boggling settlement, which makes my PC whine in self-pity at 8 frames per second in the screenshot mode. If you have enjoyed last such vast settlement I showcased in episode 6, you most certainly will like this one too. Not only is its size impressive beyond belief, but its many unique features and designs are a sight to behold as well. Do note that if you want me to showcase your settlement in a video like this, send me in the screenshots or even better the save file at the email address in the description. There you will also see the links to my guides and multiple let's plays of Going Medieval. So now that I have given you a small peek at the main event, how about I make you wait a while as we look around this settlement's large outposts. The player behind all this goes by Soyuz, and the settlement is called Ottenburg. I will talk about the inspiration behind it a bit later. This block bridge is just the first landmark of this entire settlement and serves as an entrance to this little village. There aren't that many traps or defenses, so it's more for show, and I admit it's a good show. The village itself is made up of a mix of small and large structures, each with their own purpose. There is a spot for the merchants to sell their wares, homes for the settlers, and both a temple and a church. These might be small, but Soyuz managed to give them a recognizable shape. This keep slash guard post shows a mix of construction materials, while housing only weapons and guard stations. As we reach the lower levels, we find a staircase which leads into a tunnel, which in turn connects this village with other similar ones. And on that level, we also find some food storage, and the ice boxes, which are right below the merchant's stalls, in fact. The small kitchen is in the middle of the village and not directly next to the food basement, which is not something we see often because of the lower efficiency of that design. Here, we also find a really nice garden set aside for skeps and honey production, complete with red currant bushes for the bees to have a nearby source of nectar. Deep role playing that. Looking at the homes and other buildings, we see more of that mix of materials and the special look that produces. To some, it might be an eyesore and a mismatch of designs, but I kinda get it. Next to this home is something, I must admit, no one bothers with, but its role-playing value is great. Ah well! This player even had a bit of it dug out to complete the design. It's such a small creation, but at the same time a staple of medieval villagers and fits perfectly. These lovely settler homes are all full of tiny details like fences, gardens, stools and torches. The religious buildings also have a unique compact design, so with a small footprint they fulfill their function well. And another cool detail is how one of them is partially dug into the hill. The main building has a mix of uses. On the top level we have a place for eating and weapon storage slash guard posts, as well as a couple's bedroom. The lower levels are mostly for prisoner cells with some bedrooms for guards. But let's finally look at the main settlement and be awed by it. Again, sorry for the frame rate drops, it is inevitable with such insane builds. Besides its immense size, the second thing we can notice about the settlement is the choice of material, that being limestone blocks with some clay and wood roofs and battlements in the mix. There is a truly impressive amount of individual, uniquely designed buildings in this main settlement, and even a pyramid, which we will take a peek at a bit later. The rest of the map is filled with more small settlements. Some are forts with individual buildings, while others are basically just a keep with a lot of defensive positions and walls. There are also smaller things that can be found, which have their own functions, and that is exactly what I want to show you next to the small settlement we looked at previously. Gallows! Yes, Soyuz has actually designed and built actual gallows for hanging criminals and captured raiders. Now you understand why the settlement next door has cells for prisoners. Of course, this is all role-playing on our part, and that is the only thing we can do with the gallows until the developers introduce such features into the game. I should mention to you that Soyuz has used English lore and stories as inspiration for Othenburg as well as some fantasy mixed in. And as we move on to the crypt over here, you can see that more expressed. 
The whole crypt complex is dug into a depression and the surrounding ground. There is no lack of details, starting with this section over here, with religious decorations above some different caskets, with even dug in walls and arches. The rest of the crypts are of less quality construction, so to speak, and on the other side we have a much more fancy crypt which actually hides a passageway with traps, bones and which extends to other keeps spread around the map. One of these is fully isolated by a ditch and that underground passageway is the only way in. It has a beautiful, elegant design with mostly limestone bricks with some of the pillars which have been edited using the visual tools available since update 3. A different kind of defensive keep is just next to it. This one has its own walls and a tall open keep. The top is a guard post, while the inside of it is just set up as a guard house and guards here actually have their own shrines to both religions in the bottom level. The deeply hidden passageway from this keep is also connected to the main underground network which extends across the map and has exits at most of the smaller settlements. The only two which are not part of this network but have their own, which in turn connects to the other network, are the clay keep and the limestone settlement up here. This last one actually looks the most like something out of Stronghold. It has separate towers which are connected by walls and buildings which use the walls as one of their sides. There is a bridge, some trees grow inside the bailey, while the whole settlement is built on multiple levels. Some buildings are guard towers with extra equipment for fighters, others are temples and churches, and there is even a blacksmith. The main keep of this settlement has a number of interesting designs, like the outer wall with a separate tower, the long bridge entrance on one side, and the mini bridge entrance at its base. Now it is finally time to take apart the main settlement of this map. Because it's so huge and interconnected inside of it, I will start from the outside. This is one of the side entrances if you can believe that. The design is quite distinctive with two tall elongated tower structures with a double layer door entrance in between them. In front of this entrance there are a few rows of wooden marilands which hide a ditch. There are also lots of traps in the front of the reinforced double doors, while the towers are mostly guard posts with lots of weapons and archer positions behind battlements. An interesting place right next to the side entrance is this mini barley farm. It's all nicely planned out and we will come back later to check out all the details. Now we should take a look at the second side entrance which has a very similar design to the first, but where it differs is because of the terrain on which it is built. The front does not have traps, but it does have that ditch with marilands, while the gates are at the back of stairs. The long towers are present again, but this time we have four layers of reinforced doors with kill boxes at each layer. We can see the remains of some past raids here and even at the inner doors, meaning these defenses are just adequate enough to stop the attackers. There are no leftovers of enemies here inside the settlement. A top-down view is quite self-explanatory, showing us just how well this design works out even when built on uneven hilly ground. As we travel along the walls to find the main entrance to the settlement, we can locate a few interesting spots. For example, these decorated staircases which provide a way to ascend to the topmost level and even a hunting lodge of some sorts at the base. When the settlers finally climb up and reach the walls, there they can find a small temple and church. This I must admit is something I have never seen before. Religious structures built into the main tower and walls of the settlement on the outside. And just below this is the main entrance to the settlement. This is obviously also the main target for enemy raiders, evident by the massive number of bones and dropped equipment. It's also poetic, as it is located here next to the cemetery slash crypt. Just look how much stuff is left over here, and it's not even junk gear. This is good quality armor and the whole area looks straight out of some Hollywood post battle scene. So what defenses do we have here? Well, metal traps for one and lots of those right in front of the dugout dry bridge which is decorated like it's from a Disney movie. The sides are not really part of the main defenses but have those wooden marilands nonetheless. Once the enemies do reach the main gates and manage to bridge them, 
they are greeted with more stairs and more gates, behind which there are yet more stairs and gates, about half a dozen in total. This path actually ends inside a building which has several functions. It acts as a guard post and it's equipped as such, while the outside presents a mix of stately function and combat readiness. If we move in from the inside doors, we find something not really expected at such a building. An audience chamber with the king and queen. Or at least that is the vibe I am getting from it. Zooming out and outside, I keep being impressed by the symmetry and beauty of this design. This main entrance is basically the size of some whole settlements I have showcased in the past. The walls and towers themselves have many handcrafted features, like these windows with the extra protruding walls behind and above them, then the corners of walls which also have different visual designs. Now let's dive into the huge gardens which are right next door to this main entrance. This beautiful path with the arches is part of that structure, while to the side we can see tree rows, paths, flower beds, well we can imagine those red currant shrubs representing those and there is even a picnic table and stools. The side path gives direct access to the main building in this garden, which has some original outside pillars connected to the main structure by tiny block archers. You can see just how much care was put into this garden and setting up everything by hand to get the perfect tree rows, decorated picnic spots and best of all to have an indoor supply of food and wood. If you are wondering what is inside of that big building, it's treasure! Mostly gold with some books and apples. It sure is an odd choice for keeping gold, but there it is. Some pyres are present on this level at the edge of the garden, but there are more of them high up on the walls. And interestingly enough, the guards are not only given weapons at their disposal at the battlements, but also game tables. Now, this low part of the walls has a hollow keep like structure which oddly enough has a set of doors to the outside. You might think this is some hidden entrance, and it sure does look that way, but the way to this valley is blocked off by several layers of traps and marlons. The lack of bones and discarded items show there have been no battles fought here. Next to this low keep is another high keep with additional open spaces with arms and armor, and some rather strange designs for the base of the structure. So it wasn't until I lowered the levels enough that I found a hidden room here. Behind a set of doors and below the actual walls lies a chest full of uh, who knows what. That is quite the lovely role playing feature and I applaud the idea. Next door to this we have a park of some sorts which also serves as a place for merchants to come by and sell their bears. There are stables, stools, plants, trees and even game tables. But this is all just an intro for this massive pyramid. The inspiration behind this work of art is part Salisbury Hill, an ancient site near Avebury in England, and part Incan Temple with a dash of Greek ruins around it. At least that is how Soyuz explained it to me. And he is but one of more than a dozen players who have sent me their settlements to showcase lately. Now, if you have been enjoying this one so far, please don't mind me reminding you to hit that like button, post a comment on what looks best to you in this settlement, and subscribe to see future showcases and my videos on this and other strategy games. The mix of styles did end up producing something totally new and unique, a pyramid with actual square towers. On the top of those you have flag decorations, a table and stools at the flat top of the pyramid, and candle stands are just some of the most eye-popping detail. The whole structure takes up a large area of the settlement and it's one of the tallest buildings. It has another park-like setup on the other side with some actual entrances. If we start to peel off its layers, we will start to find even more interesting stuff inside. The first of which are these whole sections below the top, but more fascinating are these labyrinths or mazes inside the pyramid proper. Since it's used as a burial place, these mazes could be looked at as a way to keep unwanted visitors away, which is the first for this series of showcases and a really cool design choice for the inside of it. It's so simple and yet so original to see something like this and on this scale done in this game. 
There was that massive pyramid settlement I showcased a few episodes ago, link up here and below, but the inside of it didn't have this kind of a cool idea. Another feature of this pyramid is a big dining hall with game tables on its bottom level right next to a small kitchen. It is an impressive building with lots of unexpected features incorporated in its design. It looks out of place in a medieval settlement, but still. Moving on, we find a large cathedral-like religious building. On its top floor, there is a small bedroom with an equally small library underneath, giving it a strong role-playing sense. Below that is an apothecary bench at the level which has an open floor looking down on the main level. It's quite ostentatious down there, with offerings which include gold and silver. This building is just one example of construction done on multiple levels without flattening the ground first. Soyuz has done this all across the map, working with the terrain rather than against it. As for the outside, detailing on the building itself is really well done, respecting both symmetry and materials used. The one thing that differs greatly from what you would expect to see on a building like this is the raised and roofed front porch-like entrance. Between this cathedral and one of its side entrances, there is a small decorated plaza with a guard station, caravan halts, and a number of merchant stalls. But more importantly, here we also find a huge building which is the actual storehouse in which we find a mix of all sorts of materials and treasure. While the top level is partially filled, the lower one is completely filled to capacity with everything from hay to mechanical components. And this is a great location because it's so close to the caravan halts and merchant stalls with even an access shaft to the gold, silver and iron mine. And right above this mine, we find a nicely designed workshop in the proper medieval style with a sleeping room on top and workbenches below. Block making in this one with clay baking kilns just out front. This is all placed so closely together that it provides amazing efficiency for settlers who work here or just haul different items. I have to say that building a settlement with the terrain instead of against it and at the same time taking care to keep job efficiency is an incredible achievement worthy of respect. Now let's take a look at all these smaller buildings next to the workshop we have already visited. These are all two-story structures which most have bedrooms at the top and gosh, look at this arched sky bridge with a path running underneath. This thing connects these two buildings which seem to be mostly homes with the occasional workroom or dining room. It's like a small village on its own inside of this massive settlement. You can see that this player has used all the visual tools from update 3 to make the roofs look great and match the building materials of lower sections. This keep-like structure over here has all the extra details on top of the fact it's built next to a park and it has a really strange shape. It seems to be a mixed-use building, like all the previous ones, with places to sleep but also work inside of it. It's an apothecary with a shrine and herb garden included in the design. Since we are back at the main entrance and the big guardhouse, let's look at some of its features I skipped previously. The roof is just a cover for a high ceiling open room in the middle, while the second level holds a few noteworthy rooms. We have a cartography section, another apothecary and a big room which is a bedroom which not only holds books but also a large gold stash, giving a whole new meaning to the saying, keeping money under the mattress. The lower part is more of a guest room, while if we move on to the left and look at the building's ground level, we will find it's a sort of an army barracks. All of its floors are done in the same fashion and the outside has a militaristic look to it. I like the fact that the inside is all wood because it gives it a warmer feel than if it was blocks of limestone. Now I want to take a break from looking at the buildings and look at the stats. The historical record showed that this element was built in the survival mode, normal difficulty and a hillside map. But unbelievably enough, in 7 hours and 1353 in-game days? I am not sure how this is possible. By playing the whole game at speed 3? That is the only explanation. 26 settlers have been maxed here 
with one loss after more than 120 raids and almost 7000 raiders killed? Insane! Right next to these barracks is another little farm with all the food and stimulant production workbenches. All the crops are planted side by side and while that keeps the space required to a minimum, it also gives a large target to the blight which can eat these crops. A huge dining room slash great hall is right next door and the kitchen is actually upstairs. I must admit I always do this in the opposite position kitchen at the ground level and great hall upstairs. The next building over I recognized instantly as a library. Why? I have no idea. For some reason I was sure it was a library before I even changed the camera to the inside layers. Again we have that design of workbenches upstairs while the bookshelves are below on the ground level. The outside is just as cool and I love this design. Over here is also a building which has some interesting concepts used in its construction with overhead bridges and passageways. On this occasion I must admit I did not expect to find a religious interior, although the combo of books and shrines kind of gives it a monastery like appearance rather than a straight up temple. I hope Soyuz will tell us more about it in the comments. Here we finally find some equipment with also the workbenches responsible for crafting it. Forgers and armor smithing stations and even a few shrines. The armors are all very high quality steel, exactly what the villagers are already wearing. These caps which I missed before are next door with red curtain shops for bees to find nectar at. That is again some role playing as it's not required by the game. And those just reminded me to go back to that barley field and show you what else is there. The three rooms built here are mostly for storage of raw barley with another well over here to the left if you haven't recognized it as such. One thing I didn't expect to find here were whole defensive towers. Because this side entrance actually has a furnace and pyres built inside of its towers and they have seen lots of use considering the amount of ash spread around. The other tower is also hollow meaning these walls are not as thick as they might look from the outside. The other side entrance is not like this. Its towers only feature a narrow inside path, probably for fixing damage to the very thick walls, while the lower sections don't even have that and are totally solid up to 6 wall layers. Some things I have skipped to show you are the seed storage rooms built into one of the defensive towers next to the crop fields for easy access. Back on the topic of hall walls, this is how the main entrance towers look like once we peel off the tops. Again we find a furnace and even a sewing workbench inside one of them, hmm. while the other one is empty. The lower sections are filled with clay pillars and this keeps being the design of choice all the way to the foundations. If we zoom into these metal traps on this level, we can see just how dangerous they look like under the ground. The business end of those spikes looks really sharp. And this camera view actually gives me an idea to show you all the layers of the main settlement one at a time. Without doing this I would have totally missed this underground sewing workshop which actually holds an amazing amount of high quality clothes made from different materials. Another place I didn't show you up to now is the food basement complete with ice cubes which is located directly under that kitchen we found next to the crop fields. Now I want to continue with that look layer by layer as it helps us realize the full scale of the settlement in 3D. This view also shows all the places where materials were combined and what they were used for. Raw clay looks like a universal filler for terrain while clay bricks were sometimes used for roofs. The video overview of Ortenburg has taken this whole episode to do, but I am quite sure it was worth it. I have received many more of your settlement save files and I will get to showing off those in the next episodes. The email to which the rest of you can send me your settlements to showcase is in the description below. Thank you for watching and happy gaming.